I have here an odd little cup that tips over when you don't have anything in it. So it really wants to stay on its side unless I pour some water in it. When I fill it all the way up, it stands perfectly upright. So when it's filled up, I can set it upright and it's fine. But if I just take a drink from it, so there's only a little bit of water in it, set it back down, <laughs> it spills. It's really weird to try to trust your drink to a cup that's laying on its side, but as you pour it in it, it stands up itself. <laughs> it's so weird. Now I have the opposite of that cup. This cup stands up just fine without any water in it, but when I pour some liquid in it, it spills. <laughs> so how are these cups working? Well, this all started when I wanted to choose a sit-stand desk that was actually stable and not wobbly. So this got me thinking about stability. Why do some things tip over easily and some don't? Well, in order for something to be stable and not tip over, its center of gravity needs to be somewhere above the base of the object. For example, this box is stable, but if I turn it so that its center of gravity is now outside the edge of the base, it'll tip over. So let's go back to our cups. You can see that the way this is working is because the hole in the cup is not centered. You can see that this side is thicker. This is made out of thick, heavy resin, and so this side weighs much more than this side. So it'll stay on its side, especially if you set it down a little bit off center, then it just flips over. But now you take this volume that used to be air and fill it with water, so it shifts the center of mass over this side. So now the center of mass is directly above the base. So for this cup, the hole is also off center, but this side is now less dense than water. So this is hollow inside this light PLA material. So when I pour water in this side, it makes it more dense over here. So the center of mass gets moved to the side and it makes it tip over. So I'm gonna use this principle to choose a real rock solid standing desk. But most things that we deal with like this desk aren't on the verge of just tipping over on their own. They only tip over if we push on them. But why do some things tip over when we push on them and some things slide? Well, when an object is just sitting there, its weight is evenly distributed along its base. So the average force is right in the center under the center of gravity. But when you push on it, it redistributes the force on the opposite side of where you're pushing. So the body will tip over when the moment exerted by the pushing and friction forces exceeds the moment exerted by the gravity and the normal force. So to figure out whether something will slip or tip when you push on it, you just calculate whether it takes more force to tip it or whether it takes more force to make it slide. Whatever requires less force, it will do that. So in this case, you just calculate the force to tip and the force to slide, and we can see that the tipping force takes less force, so it'll tip. But if we had a more slippery surface, so the frictional force is higher, then it'll slide first. So let's see how this applies to choosing a sit-stand desk. So in order to test these, we need a bunch of standing desks, but they're actually pretty expensive. But luckily, FlexiSpot sponsored this video and sent me their desk, along with five of their competitors' desks so that I could compare them. In just lifting the boxes, I knew that FlexiSpot already had an edge. Their desk legs were super heavy. This means that the mass was lower to the ground, which means it would take much more force to tip it than if the mass were higher. So let's go through each of these desks and give it a test. Let's try to tip the desks and see how they do. Okay, so I have each of these set to 43 inches. First, let's try tipping it. So this slides and doesn't tip, that's good. Ooh, a little more tipping action. Oh. <laughs> So it won't slide, but it does tip. So this one's super lightweight, pretty wiggly and slides everywhere. Now besides tipping, one key factor is how much it shakes. In fact, in addition to tipping, wobbling is also related to the center of mass and can be considered as only a low degree of tipping. So this tiny gap between the two stages obviously affects its stability, which is normal, because the tube can't be completely stuck or it can't be lifted. But what the brand has to do is to make the gap as small as possible to achieve a low degree of shaking, but it can affect raising, which needs to be balanced. 
So let's do a wiggle test. Look at that, there's almost no sway to it. Not much actually. Pretty solid from this direction. Let's try this direction. Okay, that one's super wiggly. This one I can tell is a lot more top heavy. This way. Pretty stable from the side. The front, a little more wobbly. Okay, pretty wobbly this way. Pretty wiggly. Now this doesn't have anything to do with tipping, but I need to use these desks to set heavy things on them. So let's load them up and see how much weight we can actually put on them before they stop. Okay, let's test it with 325 pounds. Here we go. It's going up. <laughs> oh, the uplift desk already aired out. Not even close. <laughs> okay, the standard test. Now what about the most important part of these desks? How much does each one cost? Well, I put the prices from their website here so you can have a clear view of it. All these prices are in 60 inch by 30 inch for bamboo wood desktops. Now the price may vary for different desktops chosen. And I'll put a link for all these desks in the description below as well. So we tested some of the most famous standing desk brands on the market. Now I won't say which one I like better since all these desks were sent by FlexiSpot, so you'll have to be the one that makes your decision. Compared to their performance and price, which one do you guys like better? You can leave your opinion in the comments section below. My son actually made the STL file for this in Blender. It's actually a really good model, so I'll leave the link to it in Thingiverse in the description if you want to download it. Now I used a resin printer for this because it's super heavy and durable for a cup, but you could try to use PLA and make it all the way filled in and see if it still works. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.